Hi guys, how's it going? Here we go again. Bex is still away and I've got to work out how to somehow do some of my amazing boaty DIY. So luckily I'm not up here by myself. I've got the mighty, awesome, excellent Alison coming down to help us finish off our cratch covers. But that comes at a price. I've got to try and uh, drill in about 10 holes into the roof. And that's some scary stuff. I've drilled some holes in some other parts, the hatch doors, the right at the front, but I've never done any in the actual roof. So that should be interesting. And that's so that these little clips can go on where the cratch cover sort of holds onto and it keeps it all nice and tight. So no horrible evil wind can come and just uh, blow it away, I suppose. Also, that isn't it. Do you remember this horrible little hole we had on our roof? Horrible big hole. It's, it's not even a hole really, is it? It's actually a crevice. I finally found some uh, real proper marine filler opposed to the old grubby marine filler that I had in the, the previous episode. And we're going to fill that up and make it all nice and pretty. And uh, then I'm going to get the red oxide on there, which is a primer, I think. Then hopefully in the next episode, we can put on the paint, which stupidly I didn't get a colour match for. So yeah, it's slightly off. It might be a little bit off shade wise, but it's still offering a protective sort of seal to the, uh, the crevice. And that's more important then it looking absolutely perfect for now, isn't it? Okay, let's get cracking. Number one priority, always glove up guys. The black marigold, which isn't really a black marigold, it's a black workman's glove. And let's go and have a quick look up on the roof and see what the situation is up there. Because, well, it's about seven in the morning, so there's a bit of condensation everywhere. It's all a little bit sort of wet. I might have to dry a few little areas before we get cracking. But let's check out the hole. Let's check out the crevice. Day of the crevice. And not only is it the big bad boy crevice we have to see to, on the other side of the boat, we also have a mini crevice. Some would call a baby crevice. Some would call a spawn of crevice. Anyway, onto the big bad boy crevice. Sorry guys, I'm gonna start acting a bit more professional. Onto the drying procedure. Dry the unapplicated area. Probably shouldn't be that loud. It's only seven in the morning, everyone's still in bed. But I'm excited to get the crevice sorted. Freshly ordered from Amazon, our marine filler. Lug that out. That'll be the filler and that'll be the Ardner, I imagine. I've got a feeling you've got about 10 minutes and then it sets, because after 10 minutes it's completely dry. So you've got to be, be pretty quick with this. Must be clean, dry and free from rust. Might have to get the old heater on there quickly. Apply your four minutes to apply it before it goes hard. Okay. Step two, give the still wet surface a deeper dryer with Becker's portable heater. And yeah, I think these aren't the most energy efficient little buggers, are they? Safe, in it. <laughs> yeah, we uh, don't want that dropping in there, do we guys? Or we'll be having leg of swan for dinner. So yeah, this is what was meant to turn up. Instead, we got that. Which is probably exactly the same stuff, but I mean, it's a lot smaller, isn't it? So watch out if you go on Amazon and they got a photo of the actual uh, plastic padding marine filler because the company I got it from, which was the first one that came up, sent me that instead. It'll have to do, it'll have to do. I mean, my biggest worry is I've never done anything like this before. So uh, once I start mixing it and it dries, you've got four minutes and you've got to get it on there quick. And what if it hardens before like, I'm ready? Okay, let's have a look. Maybe I'll mix it on the roof. Step three, time to prepare the filler. Mix a golf ball sized amount of gloop from tub one with three to four centimeters from gloop supplied in a little baby tube that came with tub one. I'm going for it. We will now refer to the two scientific gloops as filler. And we have roughly three minutes until this turns into the hardest thing on planet Earth. Oh God. Push it into all the corners, do you? Is that what you meant to do? Push it down into it. And obviously I've never ever done this before, guys. So I tried to flatten it, but little holes just kept appearing. Maybe it's gonna need a few little sort of coats. So I'm gonna get some white spirit on there quickly. It's gonna be a nightmare to get off, isn't it? On the other side quickly. So I've got all this filler on the boat, even in areas that I don't want it, and I need to try and get that off before it dries. And I've got this other little baby one I've got to sort out as well before the hardener dries. All right, let's get some white spirit. Seems to come off quite easy at the moment, but the drying process pro probably hasn't started to commence, has it? I'll leave it like that, and then I'll probably go over a few of the areas again. We've got enough there to go over other bits. 
just about in that tin. And I will be doing the second process via yellow original marigold. Somehow I've lost or misplaced the bloody instructions. I literally had them a few seconds ago. Mm. That's what you're all up against. Okay, let's start fresh. Yeah, it can be sanded after 15, 20 minutes. So nothing better than a fresh pair of marigolds. Can't beat the yellow, the yellow marigold. Step four, the sanding process. The big boy. You will go over this one again, I think. Sand it down and then get the secondary crevice sorted out. Good God, a crevice in a crevice. That's what they do in the, uh, the adverts, isn't it? Something like that. And this is when it occurred to me that uh, I'm actually sanding the boat as well. And I do not want to be taking off a layer of the, the good paint either. Someone said that this uh, filler is meant to be an absolute nightmare to get off, but seems to be coming off pretty easy. Or maybe again, it's my superhuman strength pumping through my veins. It's been here before so many times. Second coating on the crevice, in the crevice. Step five, add said new portion of filler to crevice within a crevice. Mission, to delete both crevices. Sorry guys, I'm gonna stop now. I mean, you can sand it, can't you, anyway? So it shouldn't really matter. The problem is I've found, the more you fiddle with it, the worse it gets. Oi, oi. I'm gonna go with that, because the hole's filled. A bit lumpy, I'm gonna hope that we can sand it down and make it look lovely. I will just put a little splodge on this one over here too. A couple of little, just a little line going through it. If it's still in the four minute bracket. Watch me grow in confidence as I become a DIY animal. Yeah, I'm uh, not sure if that's ever gonna happen. Do you guys? But I will try. What's the time now? What's the time? Now? Um, Alison's gonna be down here for half nine to start drilling these horrible holes in our beautiful floaty home. Also, I've just remembered that when we do drill holes into the steel, we need to treat those holes as well with some sort of anti-rust fluid. So I think we've got some, and I'm gonna go for a little hunt into the sort of uh, water tank area. So much crap in these things. We need that. Can't really remember what it was. So we have some underbody seal here that should hopefully do the trick. I think that's the stuff. Prolongs vehicle's life. Yes, let's prolong the vessel's life. I'm going with that anyway. If not, let us know in the comments and I have to unscrew them all after again and use something again, use something different. So thanks to you guys, you helped us choose our navy cratch covers. So here we go, they're finally gonna get put on and I'm finally gonna start drilling into my lovely boat. And lovely cratch cover Alison took this moment to take charge of the camera. Approaching the boat as the master is at work, um, doing the new turn buttons for the canopy cover. Good job he's pushing that bit of the canopy cover out of the way because the owner of the canopy cover wouldn't be happy if she had to repair a hole. In every job you do, health and safety is paramount, so make sure that you have your trendy goggles on. I don't care if the goggles don't look cool. I think, uh, I I think, think the goggles look cool. So. Cool. so yeah, just like on the side of the boat, we're adding these little turnbuckles that the cratch cover will hold on to. I love to put a little bit, I love, I put a little bit of oil in the holes because it uh, cools it down and it makes it easier, I think. That's what they tell you anyway. So firstly, I like to screw these in with a little knob screwdriver advice from me then follow it up with the big bad boy DeWalt and it's done here we have the demonstration of opening the door roll it up towards you yeah we'll go right you have got to go with the strap so go all the way up and then can you feel the strap popper that's it ah brilliant how did I do you did amazing you get a seven <laughs> just seven just, well, it's out of seven. And now they're holding it quite nice and tight. Now the super scary bit. I'm on top of the boat now to drill holes into the steel vessel. So next up, we put the lacing hook in. So two little holes we've got to make here in the middle. And this pulley cord then should pull over onto the buckle. And yeah, uh, create more support from torrential wind. We're in. Again, you use Minobili one first and then go in for the kill with the big boy. 
I hope I haven't gone too far into the little plastic thing, but it's on there. Try putting the elastic Yeah, we're on. Again, on the right here, we're going to put a turnbuckle and they completely lock the cratch cover in. You see here, you twist the head and it completely locks it in. They're, they're brilliant. One on the left side too. Also included are Alison's credentials and we, we do highly recommend her. Lock the lovely little bugger in. A moment of frustration from Alison as she tossed her drink over our beautiful new canopies. I was very, very angry. False alarm. There was a far deeper reason for this lunacy. Torrential rain test. Right, I'm gonna get in. I kept my cool and pretended everything was okay. Yeah, all good? Yeah, all good. But then a real cause for alarm. We found a fish. Oh no, it's absolutely dead. Oh, oh, is that how they found it? I mean, this puzzled me a bit to start off with. I thought, could have the uh, fish jumped out the water? But I came to a new solution. The war on narrow boaters and fishermen. Because yeah. they do the fishing here, don't they? Well, they've, they've caught one and just thrown it. And it's ended up in here, hasn't it? Easy, sorted. So back to the hole. It's really bloody hard, isn't it? And by bloody hard, I meant really, really bloody hard, guys. I mean, if you'd done this on a car, you'd also scratch around the area, wouldn't you? But then afterwards, you'd put the, the proper paint over the top again, so... I don't want to scratch away too far. Yeah, if you remember, I haven't got the right colour match. It's just going to stick out, isn't it? Me. Here we go, our good friend, Red Oxide Metal Primer. Metal Primer. Sound uh, Australian again. Oh God, it's on my fingers. Leave that knobbly thing again. So whack a little bit on spawn of crevice. Why do I feel this is like a real big bodge? Need a proper paintbrush, don't you? And whack a little bit on crevice. Well, at least the, uh, the crack's gone, isn't it, eh? But for how long? Don't look too close, guys. It's only a temporary fix, isn't it? And we're gonna fill that up and make it all nice and pretty. Nice and pretty. Nice, 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 nice and pretty. Oh, temporary. At least there's no hole in our roof anymore, eh? That's the main thing. We've just got a giant turd. So our back cratch cover is nearly complete too. We've got poppers running along the sides and then a turnbuckle at the top that keeps it locked in so that any heavy winds, you know, it's just gonna keep it really tightly locked down. And we've got another three on here, one on the other side and two at the back. And uh, yeah, with these poppers, we're still waiting on some more to turn up because if you look under here, yeah, we, we still need to put them in. And do not look at that dodgy blue <laughs> Smurf-like paintwork. Awesome, that brings us onto the front. There she is in all her glory. Our lovely little window. We're still gonna put a little curtain behind this or a cover or something so that we can sort of hide from all those nosy towpathers. Lovely little whistling wombat emblem. This was the little hook thing that we, uh, <laughs> hook thing, I can't remember what it's called, all right. And we fitted it today on there. And uh, we also had these top uh, turnbuckles too. Look, they're just, just like on the side here. And that keeps it on really, really tight instead of just just these little poppers, you know, that can blow away in the wind, really. And they uh, they sit all the way down here. And then at the bottom here, we're actually gonna have poppers so that we can pop them off a lot easier. In the middle, we still need to put a hole through so we can get one in. And then at the front here, we've got some different kind of sort of popper locker things. Hello, you two. Want some foodies? So, let's try the other window out. Aggressively lug them a bit of that. Okay, it weren't really aggressive, was it? But it sounds funny because they're cute little ducks. And what a great opportunity to show you guys what it looks like from the inside. It's like a whole extra little room, isn't it? Can we call this the balcony? Oh, no, no, I know what we could call it. It will be the um, conservatory. Show you how it rolls up. God, I'm showing off now, aren't I? Proper chuffed with my new little cratch cover. So, our boat, the Whistling Wombat, has finally got her foreskin back. 
<laughs> Her foreskin, is that even possible? All right, guys, like, subscribe, smash that horrible little bell, and we'll see you on the next one. Bye.